During the summertime, I like to read, when I have a lot of free time, I like to read uh, teacher's books, uh, like Ditch That Textbook or Teach Like a Pirate and books like that. And I, I came across this quote, and I can't remember which book it had it in it, but it said, have you ever taught a lesson you could, te you could charge admission for? And I think that last lady who was up here before I did, I bet she could charge admission because I'd pay to see that. That was really neat. And one of the things I've always tried to do is, is not be a boring teacher. I wanted to uh, be able to get my students to be engaged. And one of the best ways that I know how to do that is because the way kids are, their world is so much more technologically advanced than when I was a student is try to uh, bring as much technology as I can in efficient ways. And if you've ever heard of the SAMR model, S-A-M-R, could you raise your hands please if you've heard of that? Well, there's this model where people can, a teacher could use technology, uh, S as substitution, like instead of giving kids uh, a workbook or something to, to work on, you just put it on your computer screen and they look at it and copy it from there. Or augmentation or modification, and then the last one is redefinition. And uh, I was able to get the modification micro-credential from Bloomboard uh, last year. And so this year I, I made my mind up that I wanted to try to get the redefinition micro-credential. And I felt like if I was able to do that, I'd be a little bit closer to getting my students really engaged in their learning. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what we did was we wrote a grant for a 3D printer. We got a Flash Forge Finder 3D printer, and we got enough filament, uh, the plastic uh, PLA that's used to make 3D models, we got enough of it so it would last us a good long while, and I've got enough filament still left with every kid making something, and some kids making more than one thing. I've got enough to do me for probably another year or two. Uh, change it, please. My problem with practice, like I said, is I, I wanted to get to that redefinition model where I was using technology in a way that students could really get engaged with what I was trying to get them to learn. Uh, change it again, please. And uh, I did some research on it, and one of the ways that I found I could do that was maybe incorporate the 3D printer, and there's all kinds of ways to do that. That VR activity sounded like something would be perfect for redefinition, but I went ahead and got the 3D printer for our classroom change it please. Now I had taught sixth grade students for the last 18 years and we had done all kinds of coding and we had worked with robots and things like that and then I moved to fourth grade this year and I kind of overestimated where my students would be. I, I, I kind of thought we could go into some of these free online um, CAD programs, these computer made it, computer um, assisted uh, design software where you can go in there and make your own designs or, or models to print out 3D. But it turned out that was a little bit more than my little fourth graders could do. So what we did is we went to some websites that have free uh, files that we can print from. And the one that we used the most was Thingiverse.com. Change it, please. And with the Thingiverse.com, we could um, look at files that people had already shared, pick out which files, which models would be helpful for us to use in the classroom, try those models out, and then the students could uh, make reviews of those models. They could talk about how they helped them or changes they would like to make and, and things like that. Change it, please. And one of the ways I was going to measure success was through 80% of students completing um, a video and myself earning the um, Redefinition micro credential from Bloomboard. Change it, please. I, I've changed it again. Okay. I, I feel like my, every one of my students loved the 3D printer. They loved to go on Thingiverse.com and look at the things that they had. They liked watching it print out um, models. They liked using the models. They liked uh, making the videos. They took it very seriously. And this is one of the videos that we made and uploaded to uh, YouTube where a student is reviewing a 3D printed multiplication chart. And you can go ahead and play that for them now, please. One over, one over, it's, yeah, that one. Okay. This is a 
my um, multiplication puzzle that we printed off of a Flash Forge Finder 3D printer, and we got the file from Sangiverse.com. We used PLA fil filament to um, print it out. This is good for helping you on multiplication problems. For an example, like if something like if you could look up 6 times 3 and it would be 18 there. So it's, it would help you. I have used it before while it's waiting to get help on a problem. I looked over and used it and I ended up being able to answer the problem that I was waiting to get help with. I feel like it was a worthwhile print to make. Um, it helps a lot for problems, multiplication problems. They are a change that I like to make to make it bigger so you can take it apart and put it back together. And maybe to make it a little bit more flat because its edge is sticking up. It wasn't that there, there was a problem with the file, it was just because of the way that we printed it. We had to reduce down the size of it because our print there wasn't that big. We had to reduce it down, down to this size here of it because we couldn't make it any bigger because our printer was not that big. Um, if we printed it up on another printer, um, it would be thicker and bigger so we could take it apart. So we could take it apart and make it actually a multiplication puzzle. If if we put glue on the print bed, we could have made it stick through the print and made, made it um, all the way down flat. That's all I got to say, and thanks for watching. Okay. That that was one of my little fourth graders, and um, we kept uh, we we kept a whole bunch of the manipulatives uh, on a little area, and the kids can go and use them whenever they want. Um. Let's suppose that you're writing a really important email to a colleague, or a post on Facebook that all your friends will see, or a paper for your English class that you just have to get an A on. resume for your dream job, or a message to your crush on a dating site. Okay, uh, go on to the next one, please. Uh, here's another example, but uh, for time's sake, we're not going to watch this one. Go on to another one, please. Uh, here's what our uh, Flash Forge Finder 3D printer looks like. If I had it to do over this project, uh, this was a wonderful 3D printer for small objects. But like the little boy said in the video, if we had a printer with a larger print bed, we could have used the full dimensions of that uh, multiplication um, project and made it big enough to where it could actually be taken apart and used as a puzzle. Uh, go on to the next one, please. And here's a, a little girl. She's watching this other object get printed off. With this one, it was like a um, dodecahedron that has different numbers on all the faces. And then there's like a little cube here which has different operations on it. And they can roll this once and then roll the operations, roll it again, and come up with a little problem to practice for their math facts and things like that. And this was the first thing that we printed. It was a test print, and I was amazed because I had never made anything with a 3D printer before, and it was the first thing. And you take this little wire, it looks like weed eater string, and it just melts it in tiny, tiny layers. It gets about 420 degrees, and it solidifies almost instantly. I had one kid, he was worried. He said, if I touch it, will it burn me? And I said, no, it's, it cools off almost instantly. Uh, change it again, please. And one of the things that we did find out, and this was a trophy that we made to be a traveling trophy to the homeroom that had the most AR points, so we could print out other things besides just manipulatives. This took, I think, like seven or eight hours. I'm not sure. It, it takes hours to print this up. And this scaffolding, you see, uh, our supports that we have to remove. We have to do some cleanup to the prints. Change it, please. Uh, this was one that had just an hour and 40 minutes left. Change it. And as a little reward too, we would let them sometimes print out just stuff as motivational, like if you had the highest score on the map test, 
or have you improved the most on the map test or things like that. Uh, one of the things that I do think that the math manipulatives did do was help us with our math. Uh, we went from back in August to December, uh, we were able to double our proficient and distinguished math scores on the map test. We haven't taken the spring one yet, but I'm expecting to see big gains on that. Change it, please. Okay, well, um, I, have, I have yet to receive notification that I did get the um, redefinition uh, micro credential from Bloom Board, but I'm expecting to get it. And it is something that my students really like, the 3D printer and doing the projects that we did. And uh, I know that some little third graders, as they go down the hall with their students, I've had some of the third grade teachers tell me that their kids are really interested in the 3D printer that we have in the classroom and want to try to get in my room next year. And um, it's, it's, really, it's something that kids all over the school are interested in. And we have the only one in the building. And it's one of those things that um, I was really grateful that the ARI grant uh, helped us buy. Somebody have any questions? You know, they should. We were having that boosters academic night coming up, and I had a whole bunch. I was going to give them this cable to take, to share, but uh, they were, they had a different list of things that they needed. But yeah, I'd, I'd love for people to see that stuff because it's amazing. I've had, uh, I remember a janitor one time came in and he asked if it was like a CNC machine where it kind of grinds away plastic to make it. And I had other people that they just, didn't realize it just melts these little thin layers of, uh, of PLA filament to make these prints. All right. Well, thank you all. <laughs>